Hello everybody. I'd like to go back to the 1970s today and talk to you guys about something. And one of the big reasons I think many people spend a lot more money nowadays versus when I grew up. And I'd like to talk about that now. So let me get started. You guys know, or many of you know, I grew up in Minnesota. I'm from the Twin Cities. I grew up in Woodbury. I was born in March 29th, 1965. So, you know, time growing up was a lot different than now. And I thought, hey, people seem to be spending a lot more money nowadays, leaving to, in the year 2000, 2010, you know, 1990s, things like that. And why is that? And I thought to myself, because things are not special anymore. And you're probably wondering, what do I mean? And I'm going to get into some reasons why of how I was raised, how we did things, and how they compare nowadays. And I think this is a really good discussion to have. And maybe some of you that are in your late 50s, I'm 56, you may be able to relate to this. The first thing is, I see many folks, and no judgment on anyone. Hey, I'm guilty of it myself, guys, so no judgment, and this is all personal finance. But many people, and I've been over to a lot of people's homes over the years, they have tons and tons of clothes in their closet. And they say 80% of them you don't wear, you only wear 20%. Now, there are some folks that have made changes. Growing up, even my parents, we didn't have that many clothes. But what we did have, we took great care. And I remember that we would order from the Sears catalog. We'd get to pick like two summer outfits. Then we'd also have like a couple pair of just basic shorts and basic, you know, plain shirts. And my mom would press them once a week, and we wore them more than once, but we took really good care. And whatever we had, whether it was clothing, shoes, anything, we took great care. We didn't have tons of pair of shoes. We might have a pair of black patent shoes. We'd have a pair of, you know, uh, summer shoes, like, you know, like a pair of sandals. We might have a pair of tennis shoes. But we took such great care. We washed them. We polished them. And everything that we got... We just, we made sure to not be rough on those things. And that's something that we were really raised to do. And, you know, same with the shoes. And then when we grew out of them, I think that we did donate them to cousins. But, you know, we when we got a new dress for, say, Sunday best or something that we would wear out, you know, we would, I remember sitting down to eat, we would put some kind of towel on us so that we wouldn't spill on our dress. But we, and then once we were done wearing it or we had company and we wore, you know, Sunday best, as you would say, we took it and it got hung up very nicely. And I think even we had a cover that was put over it. So we just treated everything with such care. And that includes everything, which brings me to, and then also with that, we barely went shopping. We were not always out shopping for clothes, shoes, kitchen gadgets. We only shopped. We used everything and made do with what we had, and we only shopped if we really needed something. Which brings me to number two, toys. Yes, I had toys, and I grew up in it, what I call a middle-class home, you know, and we definitely had everything that we needed, and I was also sometimes spoiled, too. But we did celebrate Christmas, and my parents did give us a few toys, but we were taught to take really good care of them. And so if you got a puzzle, you made sure that everything went back in that box. You made sure to have containers for everything. Let's say if you had a Barbie, you had a container to put those Barbies in, and they're close. And you folded those clothes neatly and put them somewhere. If we did not take care of our things, those things got taken away. As a matter of fact, we had some neighbors over the years that had bicycles, and the parents would tell all of, the, all of us kids, do not leave your bicycles or any of your outdoor equipment outside. Number one, it's bad if it rains or snows, whatever, and it's hard on that, or it could get taken. If your bicycle gets stolen, don't come and cry. You know how they say, don't come crying to me, and don't, you know, don't ask us for another one. Well, there was a next-door neighbor that didn't listen. They left their bike out. The bike got stolen, and the parents didn't replace it so you took good care of everything we did not just go replacing things from clothes or toys or any of that also number three and this is a huge one i see people all the time hey i love it myself so guys by the way i'm pointing the finger back at me myself and i i don't want anyone to think i'm judging them or their lifestyle but growing up we had water or milk okay mostly water when we had something to drink Barely ever did we get some juice because our dentist didn't really want us drinking it. He wanted us to stick with water and milk. But maybe two times a year when we had like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas or maybe Easter, 
and we would have pop for a special occasion, okay? So we'd go over to a relative, and maybe I was allowed to have like a little teeny amount. We didn't have pop in our refrigerator all the time, and it was considered a very special treat to have something like that. And, you know, it was extra money, and also cake and dessert. We just didn't have all these cookies and cakes and desserts. If we wanted a snack, I had to ask for a snack. Hey, Mom, you know, it's after school. I'm kind of hungry. Sure, here's, you know what? You can have a couple graham crackers, and you can have a half an apple, something like that. We didn't go eat a bunch of, you know, a row of Oreos or something like that. You know, all of those things were considered special occasion foods. And, it would you know, if you had, like, a birthday cake, things like that, it was a very special time. You had a very small piece, and you treasured the little bit of pop you got or the little piece of cake or something like that. It was considered a very special treat. And now people can just buy that stuff whenever they want. Also, which brings me to number four, we rarely ever went out to eat. And going out to eat can be expensive, even no matter when you go. And, hey, I enjoy going out, but we went out very sparingly. And I remember and I think it was called Farrell's. I went out for one birthday at Farrell's. I actually enjoyed a quiet birthday at home with just my mom and my dad, to be totally frank with you. I didn't care about having other kids over. I just enjoyed spending time with my family. And um, But I remember every now and then, but not every year, we would have a special birthday party and you know have kids and things but most of the times it was just family parties it was nothing elaborate you didn't you know every now and then you would go out and do a celebration but a lot of celebrations were at home and mom just cooked a meal and you just may have a little celebration and maybe she'd make a little dessert or something like that but you know going out to eat or going to a movie or going to a drive-in or doing something entertainment it was something that was done every now and then and it was considered something very very special so you treasured it you know and that like i said movies with tv we all know we didn't have cable back then we had a couple channels but i will tell you this i wasn't allowed to sit around and watch tv all day now you guys i think many of you know this my dad is hungarian okay i think this may and i don't know this this might be a 1970s thing it may be european parents thing my dad's Hungarian. My mom's mom is from Norway. My mom's dad's from Switzerland. So they were raised differently, and it may have something to do with that. But um, also, you know, we were we had to ask to watch television. That's something else that was special. We didn't have cable, and we were limited of how much we could watch. For example, which brings me to the weekend. Many kids would get up during the weekend and things like that, and they would get to go watch cartoons. And not that we, we could do a little bit of that, but as soon as I got up on a weekend, we got up, I think, at 7. We did not sleep in on weekends, okay? We got up, we got washed our face, brushed our teeth. I think maybe we had breakfast and things. We made sure we were dressed. We were not allowed to sit around in our pajamas, okay, at all. We were not allowed to do that. And we you know, got dressed, and we had chores we had to do. Now, we did have time for play. We did have time for rest. We definitely did. But all of that was seen very special. We had responsibilities. In our household, we had a lot of structure. You know, hey, we have an outdoor time. It's time to pull weeds. It's time to help mom with dinner. It's time to do this. Now, I don't want you to think that my parents didn't allow us to have any fun. We could go bike ride and have fun, but there was a time to work and a time to play, and the playtime was considered very special. And we didn't just get to lay around, you know, watching soap operas all day or cartoons all day. And, you know, everything was structured out. And we asked permission, like I said, for snacks, for watching TV, all of that type of stuff. And so that was something, you know, else. Also, if we wanted something, a toy, a clothes, many times if we wanted something, we had to wait for that. It wasn't something, it, in other words, there was no what I call impulse buying. It was discussed to see is it something that we really want. You know, so these are some changes that I kind of noticed. Also, we didn't have walk-in closets. Now, you, many of you think, wow, Dawn, were your parents that strict? I would say no. I grew up in a very clean house. It was very structured. We had certain expectations, you know. We had to make sure that we were polite and well-mannered, and clean, and well-groomed, and all of those types of things. And we had certain things that were expected of us. 
and to follow through. Now, granted, if we wanted a toy for Christmas or we wanted a new dress, hey, that would all be considered. But we just didn't have tons and tons of stuff. And, but everything was made from whether it was some pop, a piece of cake, going to a movie, going out to eat, having a new dress, getting a new pair of shoes. Uh, you know, let's say if it was a necklace, all of those things were considered so special. And we, my parents wanted us to treasure those things. Now, it may be because my parents are from the silent generation. I do kind of wonder if some of this has to do with my parents being from, I guess, their parents from Europe. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or if it's because they're from the silent generation or a combo of both. You guys can let me know what you think. But I kind of wonder what would life be like if we started thinking of things as special. We had a dessert every now and then because it was special. We bought a pair of clothes or a shirt or a dress because it's something that you just treasure so much because you've really been waiting for that brand new dress and you've been wanting it or you've been waiting for that piece of cake you haven't had one for six months since the last holiday you know i just kind of wonder what would life be like or you go to a movie or out to eat once a year because it's just so special i'd like to know what you guys think i know i went way over my five minutes but i thought this would be a really interesting discussion but if we implemented some of the values that I grew up with in the 70s, think about how much money that could save all of us. That's all I'm going to leave you with, but I definitely want your comments below. I love you, I appreciate you, and I'll see you on tomorrow morning's video. Bye-bye.